Good morning, fellow privateers. Hope everyone had a nice weekend. I was on holiday for a few days last week, so I'm back in the saddle. Good to be back. Actually, have potential for quite a lively week ahead. So let's get right down to it. Um, talk about some of the weekend news. Uh, there, there wasn't a whole lot that that came out. Uh, I guess the biggest event was the China's manufacturing PMI rose to 50.5, uh, which is the biggest increase since 2012 and exceeded all uh, estimates. So you're seeing a, a slight risk on here in some of the currencies like Aussie, uh, Aussie dollars up about 15, 20 points on the open, dollar yen's up about 10 to 15. So, you know, Kiwi's up a bit. Um, so kind of as your as we would expect, given that uh, that data was uh, was better than expected. I also read somewhere that J.P. Morgan has raised the um, China GDP estimate uh, up 0.2 uh, from 6.2 to 6.4 percent. Um, you know, we'll see if this is real or not. Um, some people are attributing this move. Um, it should be caution, taken with a bit of caution, because the February was very weak, which was probably due to the Lunar New Year. Um, Britain, really nothing out of that. That's edging closer to a general election after Parliament rejected Theresa May's Brexit deal for a third time last week. So keep an eye on that. Uh, Turkey, the news, uh, the elections, uh, for the muni municipal elections are taking place, and it looks like most of the votes are in. Um, it looks like Erdogan's uh, AK party is leading the charge. Um, fairly tight race in Istanbul, but it looks like they've they've got enough votes. Um, so you're not seeing much there. Dollar Turkey was up a little bit. Um, Kudlow, our favorite White House chief economic advisor, called on the Federal Reserve to immediately cut interest rates by a half percentage point. Trump later said that the central bank had not mistakenly raised interest rates, the U.S. GDP would be higher and markets would be in a better place. Well, fucking hell. I mean, the S&Ps are spitting distance from all-time highs, <coughs> and we expect uh, to see further... Uh, for the rally, um, at least on the open, given the China uh, manufacturing surprise to the upside. Uh, overall, dollar performed pretty well last week. Uh, the euro was down around a percent. Cable was down just over a percent. Dollar yen was up about a percent. Kiwi, due to the RBNZ, was down a percent. Um, Crude oil was up almost 2%, the S&P was up a percent, and gold was down 1.6%. And the, if I'm looking at my outside weeks and inside weeks, we have the weekly chart here uh, of Aussie dollar. You can see last week we had an inside week, and I expect Aussie to be one of the bigger movers this week, just given the amount of... Um, macroeconomic data that's that's coming out um, you know the biggest thing being the RBA um, funny thing about the Australian dollar if you look at the daily we also had an inside day so we've taken that out we kind of gapped higher you can barely see this little bar but we did gap higher through um, 7102 I think it was Friday's high um, anyhow we're expecting some movement there we have the budget this week. Um, we're kind of leaning toward what happens if the market's pricing in two cuts, like in the next few meetings um, for the RBA. That seems like a bit much, especially after seeing this China number. Maybe global growth is starting to bottom a bit. Um, I think the risk would be higher. Uh, we do have the budget, which they'll be announcing fiscal stimulus. And, uh, and if the RBA is not nearly as uh, dovish as the market's expecting, 
could see this thing move higher. Either way, I, I do think we're going to get some decent moves. Um, I'm not, you know, try to trade tactically around some of the um, events that are coming out. Um, we also had an inside week in dollar Swissy. You can see here it didn't do much. Even as Euro made a new low, Euro Swiss was coming off. And then as far as the outside weeks, um, back to the Aussie theme. Uh, hold on. Aussie Kiwi Weekly. Here it is. Outside reversal week higher. Obviously, this was led mainly from the dovish sounding next move is a cut out of the RBNZ. And then we also had a, we had an outside reversal lower week in gold. And there it is in, in the chart. So this one, we're scratching our heads a little bit on this one, but I guess, you know, it makes sense with, you know, risk on and S&P's had a reversal week higher. The NASDAQ had a reversal week higher with a, you know, early dip uh, and then right back up. So we're short via options, the S&Ps, and uh, it's not looking all that great, but we've got till the end of April on this. We are coming into the uh, in the next week. There will be a uh, the largest window uh, for the blackout window uh, for buybacks, which, you know, could put some pressure on equities. Okay, what do we got? Let's go back to the currencies. Some big levels showing up in cable. Cable obviously came under some pressure last week. <clears throat> For us, this level here, 129.70, is the key. We got down fairly close last week, 129.76. So somewhere down here, 60.70. If we start breaking that, um, we expect this thing to go a couple big figures lower. Um, what else? We have the big levels in the dollar index. Go back to the weekly here. It's 97.70. Huge, huge level. People calling this a double top. You know, we've had a dovish tilt in the Fed. We've had some weaker U.S. data, yet the dollar index remains king. And this is t telling us something. I think the pain trade is if we start breaking higher and then you would look to um, add exposure in a like dollar versus Turkish Lira, the South African Rand, the Mexican Peso. Uh, let's take a look at Mexican Peso. Uh, had a you know very strong week. Obviously some of this was on the back of Trump. We look at the daily. Um, you know we had this almost outside bullish engulfing week almost an offset reversal, sorry, day on Friday. And this is Trump with his threats of um, shutting down the border, the Mexican border. I mean, it's just unbelievable, this guy. Um, anyhow, so that's Mexican peso. We do like this. We think we can get, we start trading above 1960, 65. It's going to retrace some of this big down move that we saw at the beginning of the year. Uh, the euro is still in this ridiculously tight range, um, you know, toward the bottom end of it now. 111.75 is my fractal here, and then that 114 and change. Um, there's a lot of data out. Uh, we're starting out with the PMI, a bunch of PMI data coming out of Europe um, on Monday morning. So we'll be looking, keeping an eye on that. We also have the German factory orders. This is going to be very important. EU CPI and um, I believe, yeah, that, that's the kind of the highlight for for uh, the euro and for the European data. Um, <clears throat> Talked about cable. Aussie's kind of goofing around in a 70, the figure, this area here, up to call it 71, 70. Um, at, at some point, we're going to break 
these either the highs are going to break this low of 70 and everyone's been eyeballing this 70 cents level you know that would require some trade talk breakdown that would require some weaker global data china data more dovish sounding rba da -da -da -da. so um aussie kiwi is another one we're looking at um this has had a big move up that was the rbnz dovishness but you know this this move is done people have done very well if they've had a core short you know say they sold it around um you know even toward the end of last year i mean we've had a big big move lower i mean i can take these tops and draw a downtrend line that we are pretty much just under so for us if we get a break above this 104 60 we'll call it we like it higher um you know, I think people start bailing on their short positions, you know, 104.60 to 105, 104, what is that, 104.85. And then, you know, we got these other highs in here, uh, 105. So I, I would imagine it's been a good, uh, a nice core short in Aussie Kiwi. Um, but now with the RBNZ sounding more dovish than the market was expecting, we think that there's room for Aussie Kiwi to go higher. Uh, what else do we look at? We covered some of the stocks or the S&Ps and NASDAQ. Um, again, the data we do have, it's a busy week. It always is the first week of the uh, first week of the month. We also have a new quarter. Welcome to Q2. Um, you know, European and UK PMIs to lead things off this week. We actually have ISM out of the U.S. We have the Canadian PMI. Uh, Polaz is speaking on Monday, a bit later in the day. Um, then we have the RBA meeting tomorrow. We got more China trade neg negotiations. Uh, they're coming back to Washington. A um, bunch of services PMI midweek, and then several Fed speakers. EU CPI. The big one is German factory orders on Thursday morning. That will be market moving. Um, I think the analysts are expecting a slight uptick in that data. It's been in the shitter. And then of course we have US jobs and Canada jobs data. Remember we had the 20,000 print out of the US. Uh, most people are expecting about 180 to 190. Um, that will be closely watched as well the wage inflation average hourly earnings which were running a little hot last week uh dollar turkey i'm just looking at that dollar turkey's off a little bit they did not get downgraded on friday there was nothing announced actually so i'm uh, just sorry i'm just reading these a couple headlines are coming out that's uh, not important so that should do it so we got a lot of data. We're expecting some bigger moves in um, Australian dollar. I'm going to buy the straddle once Asia is fully open because I do think we'll have uh, some outsized moves and plenty of event risk coming out of uh, Australia. And then the book ended with the, uh, with the U.S. jobs number on Friday, which could also matter. All right. Well, good luck trading this week. You'll hear from us on the European Open. And hearing from me next week. All the best. Cheers.